Hello everybody, welcome back here Real. Today we are going to be doing our review on the first two episodes of the Disney's new TV show, Ahsoka. This video is going to be a spoiler review, so if you haven't already seen the first two episodes of the Ahsoka TV show, go watch the episodes and then yes. come back and um, watch our review. I've never watched any Disney Plus Star Wars TV show oh, wow. before yeah. this one. So I've never watched Mandalorian, I've never watched Obi-Wan. I didn't watch Obi-Wan I didn't either. watch any of them. I watched like, Boba Fett, I watched uh, Mandalorian, I watched the uh, Obi-Wan. Yeah. So I know the what they're trying to get at and the world they're building on the TV. Actually it's a lot, honestly, the, what they built on the TV show on Disney Plus is a lot better than the last three sequels of Star Wars. I haven't watched any of it, yeah. so if there's stuff in it... You have to correct me as I talk. Yeah. If there's anything from the show that connects with the other shows, let well, me we know. Have I did watch Star Wars Rebels in its entirety, and I was a big fan of Star Wars Rebels. I was a big fan of all the Star Wars like animated stuff, so I really wanted to watch Ahsoka because I knew a lot of the Rebels characters were going to appear in it. So I'm going to be really nitpicky with the live show because I love the animated show so much, and I'm going to complain about non-canon things in the show. So just full warning about that. I found news that Thrawn is still alive and there's a map located somewhere that will point them to where he is. And Basically the, the MacGuffin of the whole Ahsoka series is Thrawn and map. Ezra. The yes. map is going to point them to Ezra and Thrawn. Kind of sounds like The Force Awakens with the map looking for Luke Skywalker. <laughs> That's how I felt when I was watching it. I was like... Not too original. If you're not aware, Star Wars Rebels was a cartoon show on, based, Disney, on XD. Disney XD based around these original characters after, like a couple of years after the Empire took over. Yes. The first time. The first time. <laughs> the first time. So before it. the original trilogy of Star Wars. Yeah. At the end of Rebels, Ezra took Thrawn and they yeah, hyper sped hyper away. And, but no one knows where they ended up, if they were still alive. But from the beginning of Ahsoka, we could tell that Thrawn is still alive, so there is possibility that Ezra is alive too. Which That's is why Sabine thing. gets involved I don't with this whole story again. The funny thing about this whole thing is, like you said, he, they both got zapped into another wherever. Who made the map? Ab Thrawn. Yeah. yeah, it's weird. Thrawn? Yeah, wait, so wait. Why would Thrawn he make a map and <laughs> ships it over to their galaxy saying, Well, he come got get me. me. <laughs> come get me. So there's but. some issues with the whole map plot line. There's a little, uh, there's, there's issues. There's time that's everywhere. Especially with the TV show, there's a lot of little problems. Like with this one, there's a dark Jedi roaming around. There's maybe a uh, Inquisitor yeah. Around. There may be the the Dark Jedi has a apprentice, which means that there are a lot of bad Jedi's around, and we know from the Mandalorian that Luke Skywalker is around. You would think Ahsoka goes, Oh man, I need help. Hey Luke Luke, can you come and help me? <laughs> no, we don't see Luke yet. Or will ever, because you know, they want to focus the show on That's an issue. That's an issue because they're making everything connected. They're trying to yeah, connect everything. It's connected, and but not the, connected. He's there. Yeah. <laughs> what? And if you, if anyone reads the books out there, and I'm, it's not canon. The books are not canon. But these stories that they're dark Jedi's and still the remnants of the Empire. Luke and his gang actually go out to get these guys and defeat them. And yeah, wipe them out. But what's ha what's going on with that story? <laughs> with the fact that. Han Solo's out there, Leia's out there, oh, they're all out there! Yeah, they're all there. And right. this is all happening within the same universe, they run into problems. So your canning issue, they gotta run into issues. If, you know, Ahsoka's pretty powerful, but Luke is the most powerful Jedi yep. in the universe. With that said, she needs help. She recruits. <laughs> no offense. No offense. She recruits Sabine. Okay. To be fair. Come on. You recruit a person that knows how to use a lightsaber, but you have Luke out there who knows the Force. And she's friends with the Mandalorian, but you recruited Sabine. <laughs> just saying. I'm just saying. It's okay. that's what happens when you build the whole universe, and then 
you try to shrink that universe, and then it just make, doesn't make any sense. In episode one, essentially, Ahsoka finds the map that leads to Thrawn. They are able to unlock the map, but they lose it to the Dark Sith. That's not basically not the, Sith. Not the, Sith. the Dark Jedi. I liked it. Yeah. It was a good episode. It's a good start. It started out right away with some action, which is kind of, you know, like catch right away. Ahsoka fought some droids. I know it's like droids, but you know, <laughs> they were pretty. They're strong droids. They were strong droids. <laughs> <laughs> In the opening episode, it introduced all the characters well. The action was great. Made me really hyped for what they come next. They brought back a hologram of Ezra. Oh yeah, that happened. That so if so you're a Rebels, too. well, if you're a Rebels fan, you saw Ezra, Ezra. live action. But then again, you saw, you saw Sabine, Sabine, Hera, yeah. Chopper, yeah. and they did a call out to the original animation with yeah. this like very poorly drawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the like, mural, the mural, mural of them, which was a little weird because like they look just like their animated selves. But, but a little it, worse. No, but it was weird because their animated selves. Seeing that just made me think back to the anime animation and how they don't look like that in the live action. No, so I feel not. like they shouldn't have put that. But that's my that's just my personal opinion. My question is when they do the mural, they put that cat like chicken thing there. Chicken? <laughs> it's a cat it's a loath with cat. chicken feet. It's called a loath cat. The loath cat has chicken feet. <laughs> it's a chicken cat. Yes. In episode two, we follow Ahsoka and Hera trying to reclaim or try to find more information about where the map could be or where Balin and his apprentice have gone to. Actually, they don't know about Balin. Oh, yes, they do. Yeah, that's right. yeah. They're trying to find, because they know he was the one that took the map, and they're trying to relocate where it was. So they find a little bit of information that gives them a, like, a, a land, where is it? Planet. Planet, yeah. They found, find a planet with Imperial sympathizers, yeah. which we found, and they basically go to attack that, and... While there, they actually run into the apprentice and this other character, which I guess is the Inquisitor. We don't a, know a Inquisitor. An Inquisitor, which we never saw an Inquisitor with a full mask yeah, on. Yeah, it's an entirely new character, so we don't know yet. That but as they Ezra. are blasting off, hey, I think Ezra is probably you know been caught by Thrawn and probably you know like brainwashed, so he doesn't yeah, know who he is. Yeah, but that doesn't make sense either. That doesn't make sense. I'm just making <laughs> like, stuff up. And as the Inquisitor and uh, Balin's apprentice is leaving. Hera is able to attach a tracking device to them, and they are basically using that tracking device to follow Balin and his apprentice and Morgan to wherever they currently are. I'm calling her Morgana. Call her whatever you want. Because she's the witch. I think all the characters are cool. I think the acting for a couple of those characters are horrendous. Sabine, I don't know the actress, but she's not doing a good job. She, they gave her a prominent role. But she actually is not carrying herself very well. When she's standing next to Ahsoka yeah. and Hera, who are these like outstanding actors, and they can hold their own. Of course. When they're when she's acting with them, it's a little you can feel that like I think maybe hopefully because this is still the early episodes, maybe she grew into it a little. But we'll have to see. Everyone um, knows who Ahsoka is. Uh, Hera is um, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, and another known. Which is kind of interesting. The ironic thing is her husband plays Obi Wan. He's Ewan, Ewan McGregor, which is funny. You have a household of you know Star Wars. <laughs> so like, you know, yep. Chopper did a better job than this. Chopper had no lines, man. And I'm telling you, Chopper did a better job. It's yeah. it's. I just think that she they gave her a big role in Episode One and Two. And yeah. two, really. but she just didn't. She didn't do it for me. Yeah, me neither. Ray Stevenson, who's Balin, he's an excellent actor. He has that face. He didn't break a smile. You know that? Yeah. Not yeah. even once. He was so dead serious. He makes a good like. He's a great bad, bad guy. He plays great. He he did a version of the, the Punisher, and he was excellent in that because he could act a whole without smiling. This is his last gig he did, and pretty sad. I think he's an awesome actor, but it was pretty sad. He he died suddenly, right after filming the the show. Hey. His apprentice did a good job. Yeah. She never smiled either. Yeah. yeah. I think she did a better job than the actress Sabine. that played Sabine. Yeah, she did. Like Sabine her, was you like, could see it yeah. in the, the appendix the of her eyes. Yeah. Her eyes were like, it just gave like evil yeah. murder. Yeah. No, it gave yeah. like, I'm gonna murder you. <laughs> she, I thought she did really well. She doesn't have a lot of lines either, which is like they introduced that Sabine was an apprentice for Ahsoka and they were like training, training. together. 
in not some in the regard. Jedi way, but more like. I hope it's not in the Jedi way. I was complaining so, as yeah, we were Sabine watching the show. Not, you know, Sabine's not a, a Jedi. Yeah, that Sabine in the first episode, Sabine well wielded a lightsaber and she fought, and that was makes sense because in the Rebel show she was training with Kanan and I guess later Ahsoka about how to wield the dark saber, which is something that popped up in Rebels first before Mandalorian and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So she was the one that owned it and gave it to Bo Katan. Who still has the Dark Saber. Yes. Yep. Um, that happened in Rebels. In, in Mandalorian. And that's why she learned to wield like a lightsaber or and fight with it in that way, because it's sort of similar. I don't want them to like I'm fine with her like because they said that they had this history where they were training and at the end of the second episode, Ahsoka calls Sabine Padawan, which it could yeah. just mean that she's... A Padawan's just a tr uh, apprentice. Yeah. yeah, it could it just be an apprentice. Mean, yeah. But I don't want Sabine to be Force-sensitive, because she never was Force-sensitive in Rebels, and I feel like it's unnecessary to have another Force-sensitive character, because we already have so many Force-sensitive characters. For all those Star Wars people out there, you're going to flip out saying, how in the world uh, can Ahsoka take on a Padawan if they're not Force-sensitive? The very first episode, Ahsoka says the Jedi Order does not exist. So it's like she all much, rules. She are, much, yeah, the but it doesn't rules matter are, either. She Ahsoka, killed the whole idea of the Jedi. You know, Ahsoka's technically not a Jedi either. Exactly. So whoever she takes on as an apprentice is technically not a exactly, Padawan. Exactly. And they're never going to become like yeah, a full-fledged exactly. Jedi either. So she just tried... I just hope they don't throw yeah. in a twist where Sabine ends up being... They probably like, won't. I won't. really hope they Hopefully don't. Hopefully they don't. I know you were saying earlier how you think Balin's apprentice is also not force sensitive, and if that's the case, it would make sense because you have Ahsoka would be fighting Balin, and Balin's apprentice would be fighting Sabine. That's the, that's what they're trying to do. That's what they're doing. You can tell, and it's kind of cheesy because it's so. It's like you see it already in the first two episodes. You see they, you know, they bring in Sabine. She's fighting. I'm like, oh my god. It's like. If you watch it's a old, little it's set up too perfectly. Yes, yeah. and I haven't seen cool, much of Ezra. No Thrawn or Ezra, they're both dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be the biggest plot it twist. Feels, it does feel a lot like the whole Luke plot all over again. It does. I so hope it's, they it's don't kind of make like, it. It's kind of exhausting. No, we've got to make Ezra like Luke, though. They can't. Oh. Ezra's different. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I don't know where this... Here's the thing. I don't know where this story could go that isn't what we already think it's going to be. Hopefully they don't make... You know, can like, you imagine I can see Ezra as a Luke? You know, that type Luke of Luke. Like, hey, Luke why? Oh, 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 Luke. You didn't come through the Jedi. Throw it away. What? See, all this MacGuffins with Thrawn and Ezra, they may not even be part of the show at all. It might just be a red herring. It could be just a, uh, yes. Man, if it's a red herring, I'm going to be pissed. It could be the hologram. Hey, what did we saw Ezra? Ezra was a hologram. And that's that's it. what we were that's predicting. It. <laughs> that's what we were predicting the entire time. These yeah. characters are all dead, and they're just they're running dead. around so, like, yeah. like chickens without heads. Yeah, which is kind of for silly. no reason, which would be silly in itself. They're gonna go all rush to you know a point in time, get to a planet. In my head, it's either one of the two. The characters are both dead, and they're searching for yeah. no reason. Or Thrawn's alive and Ezra's dead, but that makes no sense either because Thrawn has no power. Ezra is still force sensitive. Doesn't he still Ezra has a have a of, lightsaber? He's, no. No, he doesn't. But he's still force sensitive and he can fight. Yeah. Thrawn just gives orders. As a writer for these TV shows, it is very, very hard because just, you're giving some. They're allow, obviously they allow them to write whatever they want, but in the timeline of Star Wars, it's chronically all messed up now. Yeah, I think right now our opinion is basically we enjoy the first two episodes. We're just we have like. Concerns we have some, and worries? I have a lot of concerns. So far it's good for now. We just gotta wait to see where it goes from there. You obviously hear my opinion. I hope I have a good I, I, I like the show. It's pretty good. Yeah. I like I said I watched the ones before and I I get a kick out of seeing these characters pop up. I I love Zeb. I hope he shows up again because he's to me he's a funny guy. Yeah, he's a funny guy. So <laughs> I, I hope he shows up that I was just happy to see Chopper, man. I love Chopper. Chopper is fun too, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. she's better actor than uh, Sabine. <laughs> yeah, I like seeing all the Rebels characters because I watched a show. This show came out years ago now. Yeah. And, like, they're, like, my childhood characters that I watched on TV. And seeing them live is, was really cool and interesting. So that's why I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep watching the show and see where it goes. I, of course, do have, like, nitpick stuff, but that's because I'm such a big fan of the original. 
And of course, translating that into live action, of course, is going to be a little different. But there are elements of it that I really do appreciate, I think. I think their visuals, their costuming is pretty good so far. Yeah. Seeing a lot of the sets that were in Rebels Live is really cool. Yeah, that's and cool, yeah. um, I'm interested to see where the story goes, what we're what these characters are going to do, I think relationships, we, all that fun stuff. I think we see the last of the, the, the chicken cat. Thank you all of you for watching today's video. Go down below, tell us what your opinions were on the first two episodes of Ahsoka. Please hit the subscribe button, give us a like, and share it to others. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time. See you guys later.